let's talk about this match coming up, mate, uh, because it is a good one. Hero going up against Gumiho here. You guys have just come off the back of two common trees, uh, Wardy, but coming into Hero versus Gumiho, what are your thoughts? Give me your thoughts. Well, I think they talked about this earlier where this series is going to be extremely fun. Mm. And it's one of those matches where you really just don't know what exactly to expect because Hero is kind of the favorite, but Gumiho is very creative. And if there is a matchup I feel like Hero's had trouble in recently, it has kind of been this PVT. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's probably my favorite match of the day as a few other people have stayed as well. I think it's got the chance to be very chaotic, maybe very quick as well, mm. but in general, just a very fun series between these two. Ben, your thoughts coming in? Um, Gumiho versus Hero, I think this is going to be an interesting one. Like, even though Hero is the overwhelming favorite here, like, he, he's just very solid and has been for a while. He has definitely been vocal about PVT being difficult for him, and it feels like a lot of that spice that he had from a while ago where he was making every Terran life difficult, it started to die down a little bit. And Gumiho is not your ordinary Terran. He mm. can make life very difficult. Uh, historically, I, I always check up the stats between players. It's not <laughs> as crazy one side as I thought. It's like a 60-40 between these two, but the last several series have been very, very hero favored. Um, yeah. I dare say if they both come out swinging as they do regularly, we're going to see Gumiho uh, finding it so damn difficult. Yeah, it's difficult, right? Because, I mean, even their most recent encounter in uh, the Pigsty Cup that uh, Mr. Piggy put on, Hero Wadi throws every tool in the Protoss book at him. He goes for that gateway aggression. He goes for the oracles. He goes for those Dark Templar openings. So you've always got to be on your toes as Gumiho. You never know what Hero's going to do, and that is what's so scary to play against. And lately, Hero's been doing this Robo First thing as well, and he's got so many different follow-ups to it. Yeah. I think it's really fascinating to watch, and I hope we get to see a little bit of that. Yeah, would be good, would be good. Of course, Ben, you do believe that it's going to be difficult for Gumiho. When you're having to deal with so much craziness from Protoss, though, Ben, how, uh, how do you approach it as a Terran? Do you just go to your standard builds? Or are you looking for that extra bit of scouting? What are you doing here as Gumiho? Sorry, it was so echoey for me there, James. It's uh, very, very difficult for you to hear. I just heard uh, Terran vs. Protoss is difficult, but... Um, <laughs> uh, for, for, and I agree, I agree entirely. Uh, like, Gumiho going up against... Uh, I even hear myself echoing massively. I get you, um, I get you. Gu Gumiho going up against uh, Hero, like, you have to check for proxies. You have to be so aware of trying to get a scout in there, just checking out for stalkers continuously, because Hero mm. is so damn good about his Blink Stalker micro as well. Like, he is one of those guys that will absolutely all of a sudden turn up with four gate Blink Stalker and kill you, yep. and there's nothing you can do about it. So Hero, um, or rather Gumi, has to scout everything. He has to make sure what he's up against, but he also has to kind of turn the tables a little bit and make yep. sure that yep. Hero is the one responding to him. All oh, right, 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 right. Well, that's me just messing with Ben there for a moment. We are going <laughs> to... <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. Uh, I'm going to get you gone for now. Back into the void you go here in the Kolaris Dome for Gamers Without Borders as we now head over to the commentators to bring you this one. So, Hero versus Gumi Home. It's going to be Pig and ZG bringing you all the action. Let's do it. Thank you very much, James. And awesome. Uh, nice to come over from the Echo Dome and we're going to be getting into a good old cast one, which we've been very excited for ever since the pre-show, Zombie Grub. You've been kind of chomping at the bit to get into this series. Uh, what's getting you so excited about these two players? Well, they're both kind of crazy when it comes to StarCraft 2, man. That's why I push everyone out of the way to, to cast this one. Uh, demanded it. It was quite the diva about it. They just have such fun games. And it might be one-sided. I think Hero is ultimately favored. But Gumio comes out with some kind of weird builds. And, and then Hero is, is sometimes overly aggressive. And then it turns into a weird base trade. And it's just the type of uh, dynamic that I, I think most people enjoy from StarCraft. And in a matchup that is, it's been my favorite for like two years at this point. I think PVT is really fun to watch. Yeah, it's really fascinating. I feel like uh, it's it's gotten very dynamic in its nature. And I, I do feel like maybe it's a little Terran favored right now, but Hero doesn't care about what the stats are. He doesn't care about what the numbers are for every other player. He is, of course, an absolute monster. He's up here in the top left side of the map on Babylon. It is Dragon Kaisi Gaming's Hero. And in the bottom right, we have the blue Terran, Gumiho. 
the big obstacle for Gumiho in this series. It's going to be the fact that a lot of his builds in this matchup are about, you know, how to counter a defensive Protoss. Um, but some of his proxies get caught out by some of the very unpredictable attacks that Hero's done. So I've seen series between these two where Hero goes to proxy him. Gumiho is so well prepared. He scouts the proxy. Hero abandons it and then just like pretends to expand and then just does the same proxy a minute later in a really, uh -huh. and it's like, it's really inefficient, but it's so surprising and it just kills Gumiho. They've had so many matches like this where Hero is very good at kind of taking advantage of the fact that he knows Gumiho is a very strategic player who likes to, when he figures out what his opponent's doing, counter it. The thing is, if you can get him to, you know, do something on purpose, bait him into it. You can then counter the counter. That's the sort of mental game we're often looking at between these two. And it is a double gas one base opening for Hero. Yes, so I'm gonna get aggressive pretty early on. I do wanna just really clarify on, on <laughs> I guess, expectations for this matchup. Cause yes, I think it's gonna be exciting. I think it's gonna be action packed. Already getting signs of that with Hero proxying a pylon, but their history in the last five months actually is a 20 to four game score in favor of Hero and nine zero in, in series. So Gumiho is generally not winning against Hero but I want to say he's been getting more and more practice against someone who is as aggressive, maybe not quite as tricky uh, in the form of Max Pack. So I'm always waiting for Gumiho to really get his turn uh, to thrive, I suppose, against Hero. Uh, hasn't happened yet, hasn't happened in a little while, but we'll see if today can change things, uh, especially if Gumiho would go ahead and just realize that he's being proxy surrogated. One problem he's run into recently is because he gets his reactor so late, he often just tries to defend with three unupgraded un marines, which works okay against one adept, but often it's when the second adept arrives that things can start to fall apart very quickly, because if he loses any of those marines, then the oracle coming in behind it will be devastating, and he's looking for proxies, but he doesn't find that stargate, and that means this is a big surprise. Yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be brutal. It's going to be brutal. It's a real snowball effect as well. Uh, the SUV is gonna complete. Oh, okay. oh. Is that 9 Is that 100 out of 100, whatever it is? Okay, there it goes. It does finish up finally. Uh, but the Adept is gonna be looking for more and more shots, even if it injures the Marines, but doesn't quite kill them. That would still mean that the Oracle one shot them when they come in, but Reaper also doing damage on their side of the map. No shield battery was built at home. It's gonna force a recall. Mm, the Oracle is coming out though right now and there's a Hellion building. Gumiho has three Marines, that's or four Marines, that's all that he has that shoots up and an Oracle can beat four Marines if one of them's damaged like that. It's just gonna go straight after the SCVs. The Marines are moving across the map. Gumiho caught with his pants down. He was not hoping to run up against Proxy Oracle. Yeah, exactly. He got a fairly useless unit out of the factory and just had to wait for the tech lab now. And that's 10 SCVs killed. That is one of the most effective proxy oracles I've seen in a while in this matchup. Because even usually when they go undetected, the, S uh, the SCV is taking three shots to be killed. Has, has just made the oracle a lot less scary than it once was uh, years and years ago. But 10, that is an amazing number. And Gumiho not really getting much in return, just depowering and killing the Stargate. Yeah, devastating damage to kick things off here. Hero already up eight workers, and that's going to continue to grow. Cyclones, Vikings, and a plus one weapons upgrade. Now, plus one weapons, a long-term investment, while on 21 SCDs, now 22. It does feel a little, yeah, a little soft. I'm not 100% sure. I mean, obviously, that'll eventually help, but right now, it feels like Gumiho is uh, definitely doing a very oddball build. It feels like he's committing to a counter push, right, because he's not adding extra barracks. But going for such a quick upgrade does confuse me a little bit. Yeah, I'm just gonna say that's very confusing. <laughs> I don't, uh, I don't really get it. You know, usually if you're gonna do an early, uh, an early start to let's call it a two base all in, but you're like getting started on it, you would at least expect something like combat shields uh, to be on the way. And then there's a couple of early all in combat shield builds, but plus one is so weirdly specific. It takes so long as well, and then you're just not gonna have a lot of units that benefit from it because you're working off of literally one barracks, even if it is a react. So, yeah, that, that is weird, but I, I guess this is going to be a two-base attack with plus one. 
Yeah, it's going to be bunkers, I think, as well. Like, it's going to be like yeah. a bunker tank marine push, and the bunker, the marines will have plus one. Viking's going to land in the main. He's going to see if he can slow down a hero here. That Oracle doesn't have any energy. Uh, all he can really do is stand overhead. The Viking will take out two or three probes there. Good defense by hero. Could have taken a lot more damage. But he's only on two base, and he's making a lot of blink stalkers, which is perfect against Gumio's follow-up. Oh, no, Gumio, watch out. He spots the stalkers oh. warping in with his marine drop. And at least he knows what's happening. He it does seem to continue across the map, but no, he's turned around with the drop. He's going to try and sneak that one home. I think he's realizing, okay, I just need to turtle up, add more barracks. Remember, attacking into hero is always dangerous. And it's the fact that Gumiho sometimes overcommits to those attacks where he falls into the traps. Let's see if he can hold on. Yeah, Blink Forward already taken out one tank, but the high ground tank is still a little out of range thanks to those cement blocks covering it. And that was a massacre of the Stalkers. I was going to say, Hero might be in a better position to take map control and receive a push from Gumiho, but actually trying to break someone who is building up to a siege push when they have their wall, when they have their tank sieged, that is actually kind of playing into what Gumiho would have wanted if he could have told Hero what to do. I think blinking in that aggressively might have been one of the things that could be like, yeah, and then maybe I can do a counterattack that actually works. But it's still kind of a TBD because Gumiho does add on some barracks and is going to be looking to add on upgrades there. The Hero does lose his Oracle, so he's going to lose all the detection in the main base. But uh, if Hero continues to insist on trying to kill Gumiho on two bases, that just, it, it's still pretty darn difficult to do in StarCraft 2 to kill someone on two bases. Absolutely. Well, he's going to take out a few depots. Nice blink micro here, but has lost quite a lot of stalkers this game. Third command center starts up. Gumio is a banshee, by the way. So he's kind of, he's got stim starting now, uh, like two minutes after plus one attack finish. Shout out to plus one. Actually helped the Marines probably kill an extra stalker or two when they did go in there. He sees the third base is finishing for hero. It does feel like Gumio is maybe a little paranoid. Um, I do feel that with his setup, he should be able to go and take out Hero. Uh, since so many Stalkers went down, like when Stim and Shields finishes, I think that's like a natural kill timing. The question for me is, of course, like how many Medivacs do you have by then? Because I don't think building this Banshee really achieves a lot. You might be able to use it to really drag him out of position, which would be the best use, I think, of a cloakless Banshee. But this is... This does remind me of some recent Gumiho games, uh, again, against Max Pax. Gumiho has... <laughs> he zigs when, it, when we expect him to zag and, and vice versa, <laughs> right? And, that, and that's true for also the players he's playing against, which is why it can be a bit confusing. But he has been playing some games where a lot of other uh, Terran players would have SEV pulled, right? They say, I'm screwed, I'm going to die, let's just go for it, especially because it's so early on. And then he would actually turtle, uh, which is supposed to be very difficult for a Terran kind of turtling from two base to three. We see a decent amount of turtling from three base to four, but yeah, Gumiho has been adding that in. And I, as I said, I think it is, I mean, it confuses us. Uh, I think it confuses the Protoss players. So I agree with you. I think Gumiho should try to attack with Sim and combat shields, but if he is just kind of bringing this into the fold, maybe he'd be surprisingly hesitant. But look at this army, man. Like it is really good. It's about to have two upgrades as well. Hero should be in trouble. Yeah, I mean, Hero's trying to base trade it, but he was ready. He knows that this is Hero's comeback play. Hero always does this when he's behind in a game. He knows that trying to do some sort of backstab is huge. The SCVs force him to <laughs> blink before he even gets across the wall. That was an absolute massacre. Gumio coming in with some next level preparation. Yeah, I mean, Gumio seems to be really in control of this game, despite how the opener worked out. This is just, the, well, exactly what I wanted, so yay me. Banshee does get destroyed. Hero is looking to be aggressive, kind of as basically a front. He's really just trying to buy time and find other avenues of attack. So the Stalkers pick off some Marines, but then the Zealots uh, actually do go in. I guess he left the sentries back at home. But these Zealots are once again blocked out. Wouldn't mind reinforcing is going to take care of it. It's not like Gumio really needs to get a third base if this two base attack uh, is capable of winning which i think it is yeah he's gonna clean up those zealots on the wall goes back to mining on the third base never ended up dealing with the proxy gate i think that was almost part of gumiho's trap here he wanted hero to keep funneling units into the backstab and said i'll be ready for it if i'm super ready for it, i can actually bait you into throwing away your army in small chunks and look at that even cuts off the flanking path on the south by breaking those destructible rocks a lot of tanks marines and marauders here it's just zealots a couple stalkers and two archons a fourth base starts right next to this push hero you mad dog what the heck that is brave
<laughs> yeah, this is uh well, this is Hero's last chance to break out. He's got unupgraded Protoss units against 1-1 one, one Bio with Medivax, and you can see what happens there. The Archons really trying to beat the last lifeline, powered up by the supercharged battery, but even they will not last long, and guaranteed, Gumio has got this first game. Yeah, that's just a big ball of, uh, of guys with guns. Honestly, there's just too much firepower. A couple Stalkers probes, they're not going to be able to land the hits. And Gumiho, after losing 10 SCVs to a proxy Oracle, Hero overcommits to the two base Blink Assault. Uh, when that attack didn't move out, when Gumiho's drop scouted, what was happening? I think he thought it was a third command center build. Hero kind of thought, oh, I, I can kill him. Blinked in, and of course, the plus one Marines, the bunker, the tank positioning was great. Turns out plus one Marines shut down Blink attacks. Yeah. Now that was hindsight. Now we can look at it all together. That was pretty, uh, pretty smart, actually. But it also, I think, was even smarter because it was specifically against Hero. There might be some other Protosses who would set up aggressively because that's just what they're going to do. But then they would be less hesitant to blink in. I mean, Hero's right with his blink-ins and his aggressive nature, let's say like 80, 90% of the time, as he's improved in StarCraft and became one of the uh, best Protosses in the world. But... He does occasionally go overboard, and so you can kind of rely on him to do that if he thinks he has a chance. And after killing 10 SEDs in the early game and thinking it might be a 3cc build, yeah, he thinks he has a chance, but let's read. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so many of those stalkers trapped. Yeah, just good building placement. You know, the wall offs, the ramp. This one was brilliant. Those SCVs stopping him from getting high ground vision or anything like that or moving past and just great setups for Gumiho all around. Hero definitely, as you said, known for getting a little bit uh, over the top sometimes. It's a secret to his success. He knocks people out with brave attacks when other players would, of course, be too fearful. It's that lack of fear that's his strength, but a bit weak in this particular game, just because that one big Stalker attack gave up too much map control. And this is a great map for Terran to counter push on. Gumiho with really good preparation. I love the way he moved out and then just hung around waiting for the army to come in for the backstab as well. Like there was all these little details to what Gumiho did that game that allowed him to recover. Mm -hmm. Really nicely played, showing some of that preparation that is allowed in the first stage of this tournament. Gonna get a lot more difficult as we go on with kind of a weekend tournament over two weekends going on. Uh, that is uh, to highlight, again, only the fifth game that Gumiho has won against Hero in the last nine matches that they've played. So I got to chalk it up to that preparation because it's not like they played only nine months ago or something like that. No, they were playing as recently as just a month ago and Hero was still winning, uh, which he can still obviously do. But that game was a nice display from Gumiho. Yeah, absolutely. He's uh, he's just looking really, really well prepared so far. The mental game seems on point, but this guy up here is always capable of comebacks. Never count him out. He's a scary Protoss player representing Dragon Kaizi Gaming. It is Hero. Wow, oh, that new logo, Fire. That's pretty cool. In the bottom right, we do have Gumiho. He's uh, currently teamless, so... Definitely pick him up, guys. Uh. One of the most creative Terran players out there. Very fun one to learn from. If you don't feel like trying to play rock solid standard play, you want to instead pick up some tricks, some fancy kind of clever strategies. Gumio is a great player to draw inspiration from. It's clever details that not a lot of players out there uh, mix into their play. You know, there's a lot of the top Terrans we watch are very standard. Hero goes for a gas steal here. Wow. Yeah. I like it though, because he's seeing that it is a proxy racks and so often with a proxy racks, you are gonna go into a, a factory pretty quickly afterwards, right? A factory expand, maybe hell even all the way up to a 111. Um, but this is going to be a less tech-based factory when it does come down. And Hero, you know, he always does these very, very early probe scout slash harassment. I think most of the time he just is the most annoying Protoss player with the earliest probe possible. But in this case, also able to block out that gas. And this limits his opponent's options. So right now Hero is funneling Gumiho into going for an expansion. 
He's forcing the expansion, and he's got a Zealot and a Cybercore on the way. So he's going to Chrono Boost across an Adept over on the map. I think he'll probably be building a Shield Battery at home. I do wonder if he was planning to proxy a Stargate, but notice Gumiho's SCV is tracking him on the map. So that SCV following the probe is basically saying, hey, if you're going to proxy, I'm going to see where it is. And that means if he wants to go Stargate or something like this on one base, he's going to have to build it back in his main. Right, yeah, which, I mean, takes away a little bit of that power, uh, but it is still an option, absolutely, that could still help out a lot, and that's exactly what Hero is going to do, still building that Stargate back at home. He's still going to be rallying a lot of units across the map and hoping that it starts a snowball effect because you won't have that big, bad factory unit uh, like the Cyclone to help you out. You're going to be building up a very slow buildup of bio units, of Marines. The Gumio is going for that three racks. Eventually, he will have some decent production, and even getting a Marauder first, could we actually... I mean, that's, that's, he's not going to be able to get Marauder slow, of course, but uh, I think he is wary of what's going on. He just got the full scout and exactly what the deal is, too. Yeah, it's kind of funky having a tech lab out on the map, but not as much of an investment oh, right. in build time as a reactor. <laughs> uh, it's going to give him safety. Slow. Yeah, he's like, well, I don't want to just build single Marines or Reapers. I want tanky units that can just go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these. And the Marauder, something a lot of players don't think about building Marauders early game, but Gumiho loves to do it. And it really is like the special unit that is underused by a lot of Terrans. But Gumiho realizes, hey, in early skirmish situations, the Marauder is king. Yeah. No, I confused myself, man. You know, I was just like, no, he's got a reactor because it was a repro. But wait, no, he actually proxied the barracks. Hold on here. Um, so I, I thought the Marauder, you know, couldn't get Marauder slow, but obviously it could. I'm kind of surprised it didn't. 50-50 is not too expensive. And it is, uh, as you said, it is king. It's even kinglier. That's definitely a word uh, with slow. But this is a micro war uh, through and through. And with the three racks, you hope to have enough Marines in time. But that is kind of the question mark. And the missile turret isn't done either. And some of these SCVs are injured. Yeah, I uh, didn't lower the depot in the wall, so there's a few Marines sitting down on his ramp that are only now rallying over here. It wasn't a lot, but you can see now there are three Marines. They push it back. Eight SCVs again. Now, I am very good at pattern recognition, Zombie Grub. Uh, I watched the last game. Uh, ten SCVs died. This time, eight SCVs. I think Kumiho's in the lead. Yeah, apparently. Apparently. Um... I mean, the three racks can definitely be kind of tricky to deal with in general. Pros basically have it down, uh, but some would even say that the Stargate is like the trickiest build to deal with it. Uh, so we'll see if that maybe <laughs> ends up being a problem for Hero. Or if once again, Gumiho kind of zigs when everyone expects him to zag, which is three racks kind of waiting for that stim timing possibly, and then just instead oh. is a defensive game. But he thought Stim would make on the outside. So Hero keeps making oracles. He's making four oracles, his famous Foracle build, as people call it, which is the, the ugliest name to say, by the way, Foracle. <laughs> kind of it kind of sounds like hair follicle, doesn't sound great. But he's just looking for more damage, and the bunker's ah. not quite finished. There is a turret in both mineral lines. Oh, big fight. Yeah, that uh, missile turret range really helping out. Last shot in one of the weakened oracles, allowing the Marines to target another oracle and actually cut the oracle down in total, uh, down to size. I, I mean, I think this goes back to Gumi having a nice read. I think some other players might have just been too befuddled by the way this game has played out to get those missile turrets to at least try and save your life. But of course, the timing on the first one was still a big bummer. The supply depot is still going to go down, and Gumiho, I mean, is still in a little bit of trouble. He's kind of marauder, which isn't too great at killing pro on the side of the map, but Hero's be paying so much attention to the aggressive micro that he's not dealing with the Marauder back at all. He's going to kill like four or five probes, Zombie Grub. It's, it's not bad. Oh, oh no. he changed targets, though. A bit of miss micro, unfortunately, there. Adepts are going to shade in at the same time. Loving the picture-in-picture -picture production. Shout out to the crew who are keeping that observing going very nicely. And uh, the Adepts, lots of worker kills here. And that's building upon already a big economic advantage. So the more messy, the more trading that goes on, the better that is for Hero, because he's now adding the tech, his own third base. His growth rate is going to be much bigger. As long as it's anything but Gumio hitting him with a sharp attack, Hero is going to be getting further ahead in this game. It's very worrisome after a, a certain point, basically, with three racks, right? right? When they have stem done, when they have 20 Marines, four Marauders, or whatever it is, uh, and then bio is king, and you really have to play around it because maybe they still don't have medevacs and you can force stims and force injuries and all that good stuff. But the problem with this is that Gumio has been cut down to size on the army as well. So yeah, they've been trades with Hero, but Gumiho is still kind of committed to a low technology, really has to wait a long time until his medevacs are out. And Hero, of course, with the able to chrono boost and able to get his third nexus up, rely on the map distance as well that Gumio has to go over to get the other side of the map.
ba basically, Gumu just doesn't have anything really going for him. He doesn't have an economy, and he doesn't really have that big of an army. All he can say is that he probably won't die anytime soon. But by the time he's ready to go, uh, that mid-game power that Terran usually anticipates having, I think, will already be gone for him. Yeah, right now he's racking his brain thinking, how can I bait you into headbutting with your Blink Stalkers like you did in that last game? But Hero, he's being much more patient with this one. Notice he just picks off a few Marines, blinks back as they get low on hit points. Very nice play by Hero, who's got all of the tech coming up behind it. Charge is on the way, a warp prism that'll be able to send zealots and drop them into the main base as well as warping in there. Stasis trap harass in the back, also just being extra annoying. Gumiho pulls away, but a little too late. Yeah, that's a decent stasis trap for sure. And Hero really has all the control over the game. He has the map presence with the Blink Stalkers in the front, the actual vision oh, with the revelation from the Oracles, as well as a little bit of harassment. And then he has his three bases getting all nice and set up with absolutely no distractions. Because what else do you know that Terrans can't do when they go for a 3x opener and you're constantly scouting all their timings? There's no way they can sneak a unit past you. I mean, the Marauder got snuck by, but still, that's the only thing. No medevac's going to drop even with a handful of Marines. So Hero knows he can just get everything he wants back at home. Zealots warping in, getting ready with that drop. Gumiho incredibly committed to a two-base push. He's going to need to make some magic happen. Uh, I feel like the push already should be arriving at the Protoss side of the map, but it hasn't even moved out just yet. And he scans the natural. Gumiho's got to feel his uh, heart sink a little bit. I mean, actually, I guess he sees the Robo Bay is not done. Mm -hmm. So he can still hit when there's only one Colossus with no extended Thermal Lance, and that gives you a little bit of hope. Of course, the raw number of Zealots with the plus one upgrade is still going to be a very big problem. Yes, I was thinking the exact same thing. This Colossus dive is actually a little bit questionable. If Gumio pulls the SCVs without a Colossus even being present, it's going to be very effective against Charge Lot Stalker. And even with one Colossus, that's still fairly good for SCV pulls. Now, Gumio is not pulling the SCVs and he is getting harassed, so things still don't look like they're lining up perfectly for our Terran to take this 2 0. Hero does seem like he's totally in control. Again, very confident play coming out from him. And with it only being the bio, yeah, they have good upgrades and it is bio. I just don't think they're going to end the game. Going after the Ooh. Colossus is nice and they'll grab it. Are there enough charge lots to help out here? Actually quite thin on the charge lot count, but the stalker is able to actually do everything they need. Blink forward as well, kill everything wow. that Gumio has and it is game. Yeah, the Colossus snipe looked a little promising there, but uh, of course way too far behind from earlier. Uh, our jokes about the Oracle getting eight kills uh, and Gumio being ahead, of course, proven very wrong. I and mean, that game could be entirely differently, though. Imagine if that bunker was finished on the natural expansion. There was a missile turret up in each base. If the bunker has units inside it and repair available, that's a completely different game. So Gumiho there, no doubt, very frustrated that his bunker was about three seconds too late, and that ends up costing him any chance of getting back in that game. Right, yeah. He's still some really cool play that, uh, as you said, there is, a, there is an if there as well with uh, the missile turret timing, I guess. And then, yes, absolutely with the bunker timing. But that they are definitely reading into each other. Uh, I think Gumio kind of anticipated this Foracle play and, and tried his best to deal with it. But very unfortunate timing. So I do am still, I have a little, like, I wonder why SEDs weren't pulled since it was so committed to an all-in attack anyways. I mean, it looks like it might not have mattered, but I kind of feel like it would have. Look at how many only gateway units there are. If SEDs were included, even the charge lot numbers, I was a bit surprised by the lack of. Yeah, I definitely think it was the right strategic play because you are 100% committed there. Uh, obviously, it felt like Gumio was just saying, maybe I can play this out in a more standard manner. There's been a lot of back and forth. The game's a bit scrappy. And uh, it is very hard to judge how greedy Hero's been because Hero is a very dynamic player, which means he can be leaning into that aggression even more than you realized, or he could be greedier behind it than you think. And I guess Gumiho maybe not having quite as much information in the chaos dealing with oracles and adepts all around his base running circles around him as we do. So uh, I, I agree though, 100% SCV pool is the optimal play there. I think so, yeah, but I actually think you're totally right. He probably just thought he could poke and prod a little bit, and then he saw a Colossus for almost... It wasn't for free, as we know, but you see it 
vulnerable and you, and you gun for it. All of us Terrans, right? Trigger happy. <laughs> and then it's just committed anyway. So yeah. And, and that also goes back to what I was kind of saying, which Gumio has been playing a decent amount of TVP games in a situation where others would all in. He does try to macro. So it might just be spot on in the, uh, the idea there, but execution uh, was stopped abruptly. He just died. <laughs> so we get into game three, the bottom left of Royal Blood. He is hero. And in the top right side, a very creative Terran player going for a proxy barracks once again. He will not be perturbed by the probe harass that is, is of course, Gumiho. That probe harass coming in. <laughs> Sorry, I feel like you designed your own tongue twister. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of... Probe harass. <laughs> I was like, I'm just going to make this sentence as difficult to spit out as possible, <laughs> zombie girl. What can I say? They, uh, they say don't do math on stream. I'm a big fan of it. <laughs> Personally, I think I just like, uh, you know, self-torture and, and making things hard for myself, but unable to get the gas deal down this time. For those who don't know, you can actually block gas deal from going down because any gas structure takes up a little bit more space than the actual gas it's built on. So all you need to do is hold position a worker next to it and they are unable to build that gas. So a uh, very cute move by Gumiho to block it. And it looks like no second gas for Hero this time. We might actually see a Nexus before Stargate. And a reminder that that's how the last game started off. So we're talking about Gumio's missed timings on the follow-up while his initial plan was also interrupted. Now he gets to play his plan, which I think both of these guys are very uh, good at adapting on the fly. And Gumio was so close to adapting on the fly quickly enough, but close didn't cut it. Now he really does get to play his game. So I'm very curious as to how powerful he'll look with this in mind. An engineering bay block coming down so Hero can't grab his Nexus in the safe location location is forced to take it at his third base let me zap you let me zap you come on oh that probe i mean he's so frustrated yeah. oh and gumio messes up and he loses the scv building the bunker as well at uh, the yeah, same bunker. time oh yeah i mean good on hero of course to take this seriously if you think it is just a one reaper proxy and and there wasn't going to be any buildings in your base um you may even skip the zealot and then the bunker actually does finish and then you're in a little bit more trouble but yeah double bad micro at the same moment feels bad man but you did still get the uncomfortable third base nexus for the protoss so they've gotten comfier at dealing with this past the the metas where this was very popular but still very long distance between the main base and the third base for hero to defend did Gumio see the third base? Surely he did, right? I'm not sure if he actually saw the location I don't know if he or not. Checked it. Because I mean, you're playing hero. I feel like you just assume he's taken a gold, right? Because yeah, it, it's true. Hero. It's real blood. Yeah, like he does hero it a lot loves, in this map. He, he loves taking gold bases. You've given him an excuse, so I'm almost surprised that he scouts here first. But he does see that base on location. Two probes in the open. Stalkers nearby, but. Reaper's still getting a little bit of damage there, just denying some mining time. Command center is going down behind this, and there is already a medevac on the way as the reactor and tech lab do come up. Uh, Gumio is going to be trying to follow up with some form of aggression, and Hero doubling down on Phoenix production here, saying, okay, probably going to be some form of Widow Mine drop. I've got to get Phoenix, which does counter the Widow Mines. Yep, yep. A fairly common follow-up to the proxy barracks, too. I'd say over 50% of the time. So in in turn, you would hope that the Terran player is very hesitant about this. But here's the thing. There's still a decent chance that the Wood of Mine drop does do damage against a Phoenix opener just because one Phoenix slightly out of position isn't enough to stop both Wood of Mines from dropping out potentially getting damaged, but it really does depend on positioning and how much they expect it, and I think Kiro is expecting it, so lift should happen, Medivac should be hunted down, Gumiho is kind of hoping and sees the two Phoenix already ready, yeah, double pick up, so not what you are hoping for for Gumiho. Oh, and that third Phoenix pops out just in time to get a few shots with the help of the Adept and the Stalker. Looks <laughs> like the other one doesn't burrow either. Perfect defense here, getting those extra SCVs in the start, now shutting that down. Feels like Hero's already kind of just comfortably playing with that awkwardly placed third. Gets the Reaper as well. And it definitely feels like the advantages are building up for Hero, who's gone four gas behind this, indicating... Wow, I was going to say that he's going to go Robo play, but he's actually going for Oracles after Phoenix. Yeah, no, this is... I, 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 and I was also going to be surprised by their Robo play, but... 
He's gonna be Twilight Council play. Okay. Mass blink. Super delayed mass blink yeah. zombie grub. I've got the read. It's a hero special. It's I'm gonna go really, really late blink stalkers and then just kind of do stuff while harassing with oracles. Phoenix are gonna be annoying. And it's this weird set of units because his tech's so delayed. But I actually just feel like Hero has already got enough momentum with shutting things down. If he can now like catch the Raven or something like that, it feels like all of Gumiho's harassment is just falling flat. It is, so that is absolutely true. The auto turret might be able to do some damage, but then the Raven is going to be sacrificed. So that didn't, that's yeah, exactly that didn't make any ideal. sense. It's a bad move for Gumiho. I mean, that objective, yeah. you know there's Phoenix on the map, you don't see them on your side. So sending that Raven in there does, is not a solid move. I feel like it's desperation time. And I don't think pull the SCVs now. I think pressure across the map, pull the SCVs maybe one minute from now with the stim and the plus one. But Gumiho's got to make a big play. He's got to make a big gamble because just playing standard after all these consecutive losses, I don't think that works out. Yeah, and you know, there's so much time here for Hero that he could actually go in a storm because he didn't go blink. He went charge, which I thought actually might be an option uh, with the Phoenix kind of providing that anti-air. Um, then he could also go storm if he was getting the inkling that Gumiho could be setting up for a real two-base committal. Storm is super effective against SCV pools because unlike Colossus, uh, which shoot the SCVs, right, and only the SCVs for a certain amount of time, Storm Blink is literally everything that it's near. Uh, so it could be a good move. Having Archons and Generals also just very, very helpful and again, it just it, this is very similar to last game, whereas Hero has all the information and all the control, but Gumiho maybe still has a bigger glimmer of hope in this game if he can just kind of get Hero to misread one or two things. The Phoenix going to be a nuisance in this main base, committing to picking up some SCVs as well as the Marines that are popping out on the production. Hero's charge will be done. Two Archons morphing. The SCVs are being pulled. He's going to commit hard. Gumiho's going to grab the boys and say, let's go to battle now or never. Zealot Archon does slay the SCVs, but anything you can do, even just hold positioning those SCVs so the Zealots and Archons don't automatically attack them, could be massive. Yes, but this is even happening before combat shield, so this isn't even a fully powered bio army. Gumio is absolutely desperate. He wants to hit before oh. Protoss has really built up quite a lot. It's nicely done, not actually targeting his own units. Leave the Adept Shade in there, unsiege the tanks, get them back on the front line. That trick's not gonna work. The SCV is also master paying the cyclone, which is getting a little bit of extra damage. And here come the bunkers. That's gonna extend this for a little while longer, and the combat shields will finish too by the time Hero feels comfortable to pull the trigger, unless it's right here, right now, and he's gonna do it. He pulls his own probes as well. Oh, focusing down the Phoenix to let those tanks drop down from the lifts. The Zealots are <laughs> dying very quickly. Oh my lord, Gumio slaughtered that army. Yeah, he did, and this is all before combat shields. No bunkers were down either. Hero wanting to hit before the bunkers were done. That was probably on the forefront of his mind. That did not work. I guess he, I guess, right? Hindsight that he should have waited, added on more units, come in from another angle, because he did have a little bit of time before this was actually shooting something important. He just wanted to hit before those bunkers were done. And is that a mistake? Yeah. Is Hero actually gonna lose game three? That's a huge mistake. He's still, he's still even. Army supplies even. This is still a scary position for Gumio. That Phoenix lift in the back is big. Those Marines take massive hits from the Zealots and Archons. And it seems like these three Archons, I don't think there's the numbers to stop it. One Archon falls, another Archon goes down to the Cyclone. The Zealots going down, one Archon pulling back. Five Zealots, four Stalkers, and one Phoenix in the skies. A handful of Marines, a few Medivacs, very few units for Gumio on the field right now. Uh, definitely, you know, I think Hero, if he flanked with Zealots from behind, would have cleaned the army up much better, used the Phoenix to clean up the Marines instead of the tanks. But despite that, he was far enough ahead, and those Archons, yeah, they're shorter ranged, they feel kind of clumsy, but one shot on Marines, and they're all either dead or in the deep red. And it wasn't enough of a bad fight to have Gumio just immediately blitz forward, because that's the biggest concern, is that you think you have your moment and then you don't, and the Terran still has 20 Marines. I think Zerg players are very familiar with this. <laughs> and then they just run over all of your army and, and all of your production, rather. But I think it was really important is that Gumiho didn't have that much of an advantage. So Hero actually took one engagement before, again, anything was uh, being shelled at that was important. So he was able to rebuild for a second engagement. And that's what Gumio is always gonna have trouble dealing with, of course, those instant reinforcements, defender's advantage, and yeah, any growing Archon number was gonna be especially difficult. So yeah, that, that could have been scary if Gumio just went, oh my God, I'm winning and just blitz right into all the pylons, right into all the gateways. Mm. But instead it turned into Hero having another chance at an attack, which he was going to do well since he did have such a lead before it.
I think one of the big problems is he was on two racks the whole time, right? He's only just added three more barracks to get to five barracks because Gumio had such a bad early game that his production was so low and he kind of started banking up a lot of money during all that. So now he's actually going Ghost. He's going to do another SCV pull about a minute from now with Ghosts and a lot of Widow Mines. And as long as he hits before the two Robos get any Colossus out, it might work, but it, well, Liberator in the back, Marines on the front, the Zealot Arc on Phoenix jumping on top. This is meant to just be a small pressure, a bit of a fake out for Gumio. The Liberator's doing big damage, but he's losing quite a few units on the front. Oh, wow. The, the Widow Mine's getting some excellent shots, buying some time as well. This Cyclone, by the way, it finally goes down, but it's gotten so many lock-ons. And Hero can't... There's no way that this army just straight up wins because there's always that chance that it backs away behind a wall. He actually recalls, loses a sentry just seconds before it stops. And during all of that, all of that engagement in the middle, that Liberator was just hammering away, killing eight probes, putting them back between like a five-worker difference is pretty amazing uh, for Gumiho. He really has been fighting back this entire time. And he he is almost ready to go for that second all in that you were talking about long before hero uh, has those colossus or has used the investment of two robos in a robotics bay that is a massive amount of money that might not actually be helping him in time yeah, is it going to be Disruptors or Colossus? Disruptors build faster. Colossus are a bit more reliable in the long run. Widow Mine does get some shots off, but lots of value from these Phoenix, and that's what he needs. He needs to cut off the reinforcement. I really feel Zealots need to be going around and cutting off this rally. Uh, SCVs don't seem to have been pulled just yet, but the Ghosts have arrived on the front lines. There we go. The boys are coming. Drills in hand. They don't even have firearms, but they're going to come and fight nonetheless. This could be Ehan timing, man. This could be an absolutely perfect timing. Hero investing so many resources into units that aren't quite out yet, but disruptors could get humongous shots. And then, of course, there's always the question, do they? They should on the SCVs. You don't necessarily see all the micro. Here come the disruptors now. But here's the push. The disruptors are going to be safely tucked away. A couple of Widowmines on the backside are going to explode. There's the disruptor oh! shot, and it's going to be absolutely huge. And with every other Protoss force coming in here, this looks like Terran obliteration. Or does it? The Terran army healed massively by the medevacs with double upgrades versus just one. No, hold on. Even with that disruptor shot, Gumio still powering through. And Hero, he might actually lose this. His army was so much better, even with the surround and the disruptor shot. Gumio stands strong. The men with gun standing there in line, in formation. The 1-1 one, one upgrades, they gun down everything Hero has. And can you believe it? Gumio falling way behind in game one, way behind in game three, manages to win both of them and get the two to one victory. I mean, Hero is not ready to give up yet. He's hoping he could somehow hang on. He knows he was way ahead this game. He knows STVs have been pulled into him twice now yet Gumio is significantly oh. in supply <laughs> yeah one last disruptor shot not quite getting very much uh, another one from behind also not getting anything and Gumio at this point seems to have done it unless there's some hidden DT shrine I don't even see hero has nothing in his back pocket probably cannot believe it happened this way there you go Gumio taking his first series victory against hero in quite some time breaking that streak and in what a fashion too. behind basically from the get-go in that last game and then just persevering, choosing the all-ins, and delivering. I mean, excellent StarCraft. So excited that this actually lived up to its potential. My, my heart just jumped into my chest when that army got surrounded at the end. I thought it was going to be the perfect hold. So exciting. But, uh, of course, we're going to hear more from the guys over on the desk. Wow, wow, wow. Gumi Ho able to take the victory here against Hero. That is going to be a big victory for him. Joining me, Wardy, as well as Demu, to join uh, talk about this game. Demuslim, let's start things off. Gumi Ho takes the win. Unbelievable from him. Ah, uh, super impressive. Like, you know, uh, sitting there watching the games and just being like, all right, Gumi Ho wins it, uh, the first one. Like, and, and pretty decisively too, because that did not look good for him. Like, the mm -hmm. initial Oracle came in, killed 10 workers, and then, you know, he, he traded it for a pylon kill for the Stargate, which that is not a good trade. Like, any Terran feels bad. I was all, almost doing the pro gamer thing where you're like, GG, but... <laughs> and that third game, that third game got super spicy, man. And not in yeah. the game that Hero won, it wasn't super easy. Like, Gumi Ho looked like he was absolutely more than an equivalent player and he just made life so difficult for Hero throughout the whole series. Yeah, I feel like Gumi Ho for me, for my money, is always better in the kind of longer, drawn out games compared to doing these gimmicky little tricky things, but he tried for it in that third game, Morty, as we take a look at the highlights presented by Aramco and it, it 
<laughs> I thought he was behind, but all of these SCV pulls, these pushes eventually seem to work out for Kumi Hawati. They do eventually, right? It's got that very weird kind of factor to it where they're the kind of pushes you don't see all the time. And yeah. It, it kind of benefits in a way to be the Terran because it's like you kind of just get to go back and regroup and the pros like, well, what position am I in? Where the Terran's like, well, I'm just going to go again anyway. So yep. it's very hard to read this. And yeah, Gumiho just was some crazy stuff, man. And, you know, he looks so good in these games. He made them chaotic. That's exactly what we expected them to do as well because that's where Gumiho thrives a lot of the time in that chaos. And he yeah. made this series kind of into what he loves to play. And don't get me wrong, Hero's a very quick, aggressive player himself, but Gumiho made these series of made these games very weird, made them very funky. And I think this time around, it really benefited him in a matchup that Hero has a little bit struggled in recently. I don't know if you guys recall exactly, but in one of those final engagements, did he battery overcharge just as a uh, shield battery was dying? Do, you, do either of you remember that? I don't recall. Okay, uh, I, okay. I, I just know him. Like all those engagements were so damn close. Like mm. when you see one siege tank and ten marines against three archons, and you know it's it's not the army that archons want to be against. Like they want to be hitting the marines and stuff, but yeah, yeah, they they weren't able to. And there's a few lifts, and these phoenix taking a bit of damage before the fights and stuff. Those disruptor shots were huge as well. Like especially the first one. I, when that happened, I was like, oh my god, oh, is hero gonna hold kind of thing? Yeah. But um, yeah, just uh, honestly, a super messy series and i think ward is absolutely spot on the fact that gumiho started making it his kind of weird with these mm. big scv pools and stuff which he was kind of throwing out at really weird timings like he never made a third cc that game like which just shows how all in he was but it, it, it really allowed him to kind of get his heels into that series and uh, yeah. yeah he absolutely had to do something against a hero like that well, as you can look at the bracket here, we had a minor upset earlier on, and now we have a big upset, I would say, down towards the bottom of this upper bracket. Gumi Ho moves on to a qualification match for Gamers 8 here, which, uh, again, even Wadi, when you look at Gumi Ho previously, obviously, Wayne Katowice, he was on Psystorm, now teamless. If he gets a good run going here, really making a bit extra boost for himself in terms of maybe looking for a team down the line. No, absolutely right. I mean, he is a good player. Everyone knows he's a good yeah. player. It's just very exciting to see him playing well and to create chaos and definitely in a position where I would imagine, you know, I look at his bracket, I can see him getting through that match. Mm. Um, he, he's good enough right now. That's the really fun part about Gumiho. That lower bracket's starting to look deadly, by the way. Dark creator. <laughs> you were obviously down there waiting yeah. for whoever drops down out of Bjorn and Ragnarok as well. So I wouldn't like to be in the lower bracket. You know, that's not a fun place to be. So yeah, good for Gumiho staying in the winner bracket and give himself a chance in that qualification. Yeah. All those guys down there are not only, <laughs> they're very thankful that they also potentially have another bracket to play, uh, considering the names that are already down there here in the lower bracket. Well, that does it here for this match. Uh, thank you very much, gentlemen. We're going to go to a break. When we return, we have one final match from our Korea bracket, and then we'll be moving on to the non-Korean bracket. And the next match coming up is going to be Bjorn versus Ragnarok. So stay tuned for more Gamers Without Borders.